This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to answer the question, will Coinbase or any of the other crypto exchanges censor Ethereum after Ethereum moves to proof of stake later this year? So we all know Ethereum's moving to proof of stake. There's a lot of talk in the press. People are so happy this is going to be so clean and so green, and we're not going to be boiling the oceans anymore by those nasty Ethereum miners. Under proof of stake, unlike proof of work where you have miners, under proof of stake, you have something called validators, which replace the miners. And the more coins you have, the more chance, the higher the probability is that you get chosen to validate the next block. Now, the largest validators under this new system are going to be those same Ethereum insiders who benefited from the huge pre-mine, as well as exchanges like Coinbase and Kraken, Gemini, etc and staking services like Lido, which collect a lot of Ethereum and then stake them and then pay the people who have uh, given them to them some sort of uh, interest rate or the equivalent of an interest rate. In other words, the staking rewards. So these are going to be the largest validators under the new Ethereum. Now, I wanted to run a thought experiment today. Let's just say that regulators, particularly in the US, don't like how particularly far left or far right actor or group or institution is behaving. And these regulators contact all the crypto exchanges, they contact Lido as well, and ask them not to include transactions from that particular actor or group or institution. This can be a political thing, this could be a, a bid to defend the US dollar as well. And so the regulators ask all these exchanges, all these large stakers, not to include these particular uh, transactions in any Ethereum blocks. So let's say that you're Brian Armstrong, you're the CEO of Coinbase, and regulators from OFAC, who we've, we've been talking about for the past few days, this is a, a sub-department of the US Treasury, and they recently clamped down on Tornado Cash. So let's say these same regulators from OFAC come to Brian Armstrong, they ask you to block certain actors from transacting on the Ethereum base layer. Now you have the power to do this, as we said, because Coinbase is a major staker on the new proof of stake Ethereum. So if you're Brian Armstrong, what do you do? Do you go along with OFAC and do you censor these transactions? Or do you give back all of your ETH and close your staking service, your very profitable staking service? Before I answer that question, if you're finding this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button, the like button, and maybe share this video with a few friends as well. So as we said, we just heard JP Morgan come out a couple days ago saying that the Ethereum merge is going to be really good for Coinbase. This is a huge new revenue opportunity for them, the staking of Ethereum and being paid validator rewards to do that. So this will be very good for Coinbase's top line. The problem is Coinbase has a history of pushing the envelope and doing unethical things. They have an insider trading problem, as we've talked about in the past. Uh, an ex-manager was arrested actually recently in an insider trading case, and the Coinbase is still being uh, investigated by the SEC because they have this, this thing where they, they list new tokens, and then there's, there appear to be certain accounts that are front running front running that. So this, this is not the cleanest company in the world. And so it's very interesting to hear Brian Armstrong's response when the same question that I just posed, the same thought experiment, was posed on Twitter yesterday by Lefteris Karapetsas. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Basically, here's a question for Lido, for Coinbase, for Kraken. It's really for all the, the large exchanges as well. If regulators ask you to censor at the Ethereum protocol level, in other words, at the base layer level, with your validators, will you comply and censor at protocol level or shut down the staking service and preserve network integrity? And it looks like Brian, Ar Brian Armstrong actually answered this tweet. He says, it's a hypothetical we hopefully won't actually face, but of course they're gonna face it. This is the nation state battle that we are coming. And then Armstrong goes on to say, but if we did, we'd go with B, I think. And he does use that that weasel word. He hedges himself. B would be to shut down the staking service and preserve network integrity. Now, the, in the entire history of Coinbase, there's never been a point in time at which they made a decision for non-financial reasons. They've done everything they, they could to become an altcoin casino, to list all this garbage, and to help really hurt retail investors that way. And they've done it for their own revenues, which is fine because they're a business, but we also have the right to call them out and to point out really how unethical their entire 
business is. So he says that he would withdraw from this major revenue opportunity and actually return all the staked ETH and stop doing it. Uh, but then he, had, he hedges it by saying, I think. He goes on to say, I got to focus on the bigger picture. There may be some better outcome C or legal challenge as well that could help reach a better outcome. So this is Brian's answer today. And of course, if the push came to shove, he would go along with the regulators as he has at every point in time. And we know this because the recent attack on Tornado Cash, 66% of the validators on the new chain, on the proof of stake chain, also called the Beacon chain, have said that they are going to adhere to OFAC regulations. And Coinbase was one of them. So when the regulators actually knock at Coinbase's door, you can be sure that Brian Armstrong, who cares more about money than ideals, will comply. And we know this not because of some promise he's making, some hedge promise where he says, I think I'd shut down the whole service, but we know how he's behaved in real time when it came to the, the tornado cash crackdown. And he went along with, with regulators as you would expect, because of course, Coinbase is also running a major internal chain analysis business. They're tracking everyone, they're spying on everyone, and they're just a, a very unethical group of people who basically have betrayed the Bitcoin revolution. And so when it comes to regulators putting pressure on them to do something to Ethereum, you can be sure they will do what they have done in the past. In other words, look at what I, I do, don't look at what I say. If you wanna learn more about the Tornado Cash uh, thing, you can uh, see my video from two days ago uh, where I go a little bit more into depth. Now, I want you to remember these problems that I've raised in this video when you hear all the cheerleading for the new proof of stake Ethereum, when you hear how it's going to be so green and clean and how it's going to keep pumping and how it's going to flip Bitcoin. Unfortunately, what's going to happen if this were to succeed, which I don't think it is, uh, but we can't risk it. If this were to succeed, we would be basically replacing the Fed and Jerome Powell with a new group of corrupt insiders, people like Joe Lubin, Vitalik, and of course, Brian Armstrong. And these would be the new guys running the global financial system, telling us who can and who cannot transact on Ethereum. This would be one case, uh, one scenario. The other scenario would be that Ethereum uh, goes on and basically is a government controlled chain and the government exerts its influence over the Ethereum blockchain through OFAC and through pressure on all the large staking services that will be using, that will be staking on Ethereum. So this is very important to understand. I find that most Ethereans are not aware of it. If you're an Ethereum and you actually understand these things though, and of course most don't, I have the utmost contempt for you because you're basically the Judas Icariot in this story. This move from proof of work to proof of stake. I've never seen something being so spun, being so pretending to be so good for the environment when it's actually extremely, extremely sinister and people are already raising these thought experiments. We know what's gonna happen with this. This is just like Celsius. This is just like Voyager. This is just like all these other scams. We know what is going to happen. This is going to become one way or another a captured chain, whether it becomes fully captured and controlled by those original insiders or whether it just becomes something that the government can push around, whether the US government or the EU, et cetera. This is, this is the path that proof of stake inevitably leads to. Am I just a Bitcoin maxi trying to pump my bags? You can expect to see this. You can expect to see uh, a lot of comments in the comment section below, but this is not why I'm doing it. My Bitcoin bags are very large. It's the only cryptocurrency that I own. It's not even a cryptocurrency. It's really its own special digital commodity. But these Bitcoin bags are meaningless to my daily well-being. I'm at the financial point where if Bitcoin fails, I'm willing to go down with the ship. If Bitcoin succeeds, I'm still never going to sell a single sat. So remember this when you see people uh, talking about getting rich from this move to proof of stake. This is getting rich on the back of betraying the revolution. And I'm here for the Bitcoin revolution. Ethereum has always been and continues to be a betrayal of the crypto revolution. It's a betrayal of what Satoshi set out to achieve. And Ethereum is just a way of substituting new demons for the current demons who rule this. You often hear uh, whenever one of these other altcoins gets attacked, we're all, we're all in this together, but we're not all in this together. I love this cartoon where you have some, uh, some altcoin protesters uh, chanting, we're all in this together at the same time as they have banned proof of work 
on their t-shirt. Meanwhile, Bitcoin is rolling up the drawbridge and sailing away because it really is uh, the only truly decentralized neutral form of money. So when you hear uh, during the bad times when Ethereum say we're all in this together, just remember how they attacked Bitcoin during the good times. Now, I still believe, and I want to clarify this, I still believe that Bitcoin is the apex predator of money and that Bitcoin is going to win, win the money race, but it is definitely taking longer than it should because of traders like Vitalik, Charles Hoskinson, Do Kwan, who have lined their own pockets at the expense of the revolution. And again, I'm sure they're great people. This is just my personal opinion and I don't know them and I don't know anything about them. I'm just a guy on YouTube, but I think they are all uh, should have the middle name Judas Iscariot. So I'm asking people, please wake up. Don't escape from the fiat prison only to quickly run and lock yourself up in a new prison called proof of stake. You need to open your eyes and see who the enemy is. See how this is trending. See how Ethereum is already a captured coin. They're already complying with OFAC and they will com continue to uh, comply with regulators. At this point, this late in the long-term debt cycle, the fourth turning, the nation cycle, all these things that are coming to a head in the 2020s, there's only one thing that can save us. And it's not, I can guarantee you, it's not a proof of stake coin that's controlled by insiders and exchanges and subject to capture by the US government. It's something else. It's Bitcoin, a neutral, decentralized money that's backed by proof of work. The Bitcoin miners do not control the protocol in the same way that the validators control the protocol under proof of stake. And this is because, as, as I've said many times, but for newcomers, I want to keep repeating it, under proof of stake, the more coins you have, the more power you have. This is just like the, the traditional fiat system, where the richer you are, the more control you have over the financial system. Proof of work is very different, where having more coins does not give you any more power over the network. And this is a very, very important distinction that is going to try to get uh, swept under the rug as everyone tells us how green and wonderful the transition to proof of stake is. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.